Since Satan rebelled against God and was expelled from heaven, he has always had a singular objective in mind, to thwart the Lord's plans and destroy the lives of his children. This has manifested in various ways throughout history, such as in the Garden of Eden, the construction of the Tower of Babel, the sufferings of Job, and even in the possession of Judas Iscariot, leading him to betray Jesus. And in today's video, these battles continue against us. You might think that the devil acts only through illnesses, demonic possessions, and major tragedies. While these are still some methods he employs, his most powerful weapon is much more subtle, and few people realize it. Often, the biggest battlefield occurs within our own churches. In this video, I will show you the strategies he uses that are causing many people to deviate from the true gospel. It is crucial that you remain attentive and vigilant because this may be happening right before your eyes. Towards the end, I will share my opinion on how these attacks are multiplying and what you should do to avoid falling into these spiritual traps, all right? But before we begin, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. It's quick and easy. Click on the subscribe button and next to it, you'll see a bell icon. Select the bell and choose the all option. This way, you'll receive notifications directly on your phone for my upcoming videos. Now, let's get started. Brothers and sisters, it is crucial in our Christian journey to be vigilant against anything that can deceive us and lead us away from our goal, which is to follow the teachings of Christ. Therefore, I will now share some ways in which Satan has been infiltrating churches to divert and destroy us. And the first attack is through sermons that only speak what we want to hear. Lately, I have noticed in the Christian community, especially on the internet and social media, a style of preaching that is intriguing, but also concerning. It's the so-called motivational coaching style preaching. The preacher creates an engaging environment with lights, calming music, and delivers messages that often please and comfort people's hearts, but may lead them astray from the true path established by God. While words of encouragement and motivation are important and useful, the problem arises when they replace or conceal the true message of the gospel. As followers of Christ, it is crucial to remember that the Christian life is not just about feeling good and comfortable all the time. We, brothers and sisters, need to pursue spiritual growth and transformation, no matter the cost. And sometimes that cost is very high. These modern sermons, most of the time, promote a distorted view of the Bible, suggesting ideas such as, God loves you as you are, you don't need to change, or if you're happy the way you are, just stay that way. God loves you the same. However, brothers and sisters, this goes against the biblical teachings of repentance, surrender, and the need for a new birth. We need to understand that God does indeed love us deeply, and He has proven it by sending Jesus to die for us. But the Bible is very clear that each of us must take up our own cross and walk with Him, facing the trials that may come with it. The increasing demand for sermons that comfort but do not challenge reveals that the devil is succeeding in diverting people from the true essence of faith. And I'm not the one saying this. The Apostle Paul had already warned us in chapter 4 of his second letter to Timothy, where he spoke of people who prefer to ignore the truth and turn to myths that suit their own desires. So, be very attentive to this type of preaching, okay? The second type of attack, motivational worship. Every day, there are worship songs emerging that seem more like motivational messages than genuine worship to God. These gospel songs, despite being emotionally impactful, often focus on our ego rather than glorifying the Lord. The Bible teaches us about the importance of praising God with our whole being. At the beginning of Psalm 95, it says that we should sing joyfully to the Lord and present praises to Him with songs. Furthermore, in Colossians 3.16, the Apostle Paul urges Christians to let the word of Christ dwell richly among them, teaching one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. In other words, these passages show that we should use worship to exalt God, His unconditional love and the work of Christ, not to inflate our ego, you understand? The psalms in the Bible serve as a great example of this. In Psalm 8, for instance, King David makes a wonderful declaration about what true worship should be. Look at what he said. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, 
which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Notice that the king of Israel, who had every reason to exalt himself, acknowledges that man is small and insignificant in the face of the greatness of God and his creation. And now comes the third type of attack from the enemy, which is the emergence of new doctrines. This is one of the most dangerous types of attacks that has caused havoc within the church in recent times. The devil has taken advantage of messages like, God hates the sin but loves the sinner. He has deceived many people, making them believe that they don't need to change their lives. These doctrines can manifest in various forms, from sermons or songs sung from the pulpit to the acceptance of themes that we know are not in accordance with the Bible, such as gender ideology and same-sex marriage, not to mention that there are churches claiming to be Christian but adopting an LGBT theology. Moreover, an ecumenical movement has been implanted that unites different religious views with the discourse that all paths lead to God. The problem is that these false ideas are weakening the identity of the church and diverting Christians from their mission to be a light in the midst of darkness. The more the church resembles the world, the more it loses its strength and its testimony. That's why the Bible warns us not to conform to the standards of this world, but to seek transformation by renewing our minds with the Word of God. Only then can we overcome these schemes of the enemy. And the fourth type of spiritual attack is shaming the leaders raised by God. Another ploy of the enemy to weaken the church is to attack leaders and influential individuals within the Christian community. Satan works tirelessly to bring down those at the forefront of ministries because he knows that the fall of a significant person can diminish the strength of the church and create scandal for both believers and outsiders. This can be used as a reason for mockery or as a hindrance for others to convert to the faith in Jesus. A sad example of this malicious strategy is seen in cases of gospel singers who after achieving success and influencing many lives end up straying from the path and now appear negatively in the media. People like J.A. and Priscilla Alcantara, who were once references in praise and worship in Brazil, but later went astray, demonstrate how the enemy can use influencers to cause severe damage to the image of Christianity. Similarly, many pastors, preachers, and evangelists who were mightily used by God in the past have been lured by money, power, or the pleasures of the flesh. These falls not only destroyed their own reputations, but also harmed how unbelievers perceive the church. The Bible warns about this in 1 John 2, which says, pay attention. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us but their going showed that none of them belonged to us. Brothers and sisters, I want to make it clear that I am not better than anyone. I am not better than those leaders who have fallen, okay? After all, the Bible says, therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. What I am addressing in this video is how much the enemy works to create scandals within our midst and weaken the faith of many people. Now, I want to share my opinion on this matter. I am not against the church adapting to the society it is in, as understanding people, their needs and weaknesses has been the church's steadfast purpose for these 2,000 years. However, what needs to be crystal clear is that we should never compromise the principles of the Word of God, as it should guide us and be the source of our knowledge and truth, you understand? It is also important to emphasize that our mission to be light and salt on the earth has not changed and will never change, no matter how much Satan wants us to forget that. The statement, God hates the sin but loves the sinner, makes a lot of sense, but God expects the sinner to repent, turn to Jesus and recognize him as Lord and Savior, amen? If the person accepts this invitation, they will have eternal life with Christ. However, if they prefer to live according to their own will, they won't be able to be with the Father on the day of judgment because God is holy, and only those purified by the blood of Jesus can be with Him. Amen? If you like this message, share it with your friends and family. Let's share the gospel message. May God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.